Five hours of talking from the players and owners is enough to keep hope alive. And here in Cincinnati, the question of the face of the franchise may be open for discussion. We discuss next. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. We are free and available on all of the podcasting platforms. We are also live in Technicolor over on YouTube. If you'd like to watch us talk about the Reds baseball, uh, we are there for your viewing pleasure as well. I'm Steve Offenbaker alongside Jeff Carr, and we have a passion for baseball, a passion for the Cincinnati Reds. And we have taken that passion and we have turned it into information for you. On today's podcast, we are going to start by talking about the conversations that are ongoing between Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association, and we think that they have finally found a sense of urgency, just as I predicted. Jeff, I know that everybody has been wringing their hands and have been a little bit worried about the fact that the players and the owners have not spent very much time trying to find a solution, but if you had listened to me all along, I told you that this is exactly how it was going to go. We would miss the start of spring training, they would wring their hands for just a minute, and then all of a sudden, the urgency would increase. Uh, How concerned are you now today compared to how concerned you were last last week what'd you say no i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah i'm listening um yeah no i think if we listened at the beginning it, it's something that i thought you know was weird that we saw them meet like a grand total of four times in the six weeks leading up to this point but like we mentioned like i said in the cold open five hours of meeting that's something there were if not like inching there were at least a little bit of concessions being made by the owners. They went from 15 million in the rookie bonus pool to 20 million. Sure. Not great, but at least it's toward the direction of the players. They went from three draft lottery teams to four. They're they're going to continue to do this because from a negotiation power standpoint, the owners have the ability to wait this out but I think that this still shows hope. This still shows that they are at least able to talk this out. And I I think that neither side wants there to be a delay in opening day. No. And you know, the exciting thing about the five hours, Jeff is that is more time than if you take all of the other bargaining sessions that they've held (laughs) and you combine them, they spent longer today than they have thus far in this process. And a couple other things of note, that a couple times the meeting did actually break up and the respective sides kind of went into their corner and they huddled up and they talked and then they came back to the table. And this is what we need to have happen in order to reach an agreement. Now, no deal was reached today, but as you said, there was movement and nobody left in a huff and nobody went out in front of cameras after the negotiating session and tried to paint the other side in a bad light. And and that is the most encouraging thing that I think has happened so far in this lockout. Now, you know, you made an interesting point in the grand scheme of things. Uh, our, our friend Steve Mancuso over at Reds Content Plus had an article out that you were mentioning. And I think you should go through that for our listeners because there was really some good information there that I think really puts this this picture. It really crystallizes what exactly we're talking about at this point. Yeah, the numbers themselves, if you break them down and you kind of go into the individual categories and things that the players are asking for, in your mind when you hear them, it kind of sounds like the counting stats of a guy who hit a buck fifty but had 30 home runs, <clears throat> a Eugenio Suarez. You're going to look at the 30 home runs and say, well, he had a good year, and then you're going to look at the 150 and say, well, not so much. When you look at everything broken down, you've got these people that are saying, oh my gosh, the players are asking for so much. No wonder the owners don't want to negotiate with them. It's all about one percentage point here. Steve Mancuso points this out in his article at Reds Content Plus. He says, the players currently get 43% of the revenue sharing. They're asking for 44%. 1%. That's what they're fighting about. This isn't this isn't about hundreds of millions of dollars which it, which it is, but when you say that to me, that means nothing to me. I've never seen 1 million, let alone hundreds of millions. So, sure, you're going to have the average Joe and the blue collar guys that are just like, "What are you talking about? I have no sympathy for them. They're asking for an amount of money that makes no sense to me." 
in the grand scheme of things, they're asking for 1%. The owners could agree to this tomorrow. Plus, the owners and the players have already said that when the CBA is agreed upon, advertisements on jerseys will become a thing, and there will be some form of expanded playoffs all which put money in the owner's pockets. So at the end of the day, this is not a situation where the players are just getting greedy. They're asking for 1%. You know, I, think I think that this is doable. I think you're, I think you're right. It is doable. I think that uh, the incoming revenue streams that you're alluding to advertising on jerseys, expanded playoffs, uh, the list goes on and on. There's going to be so much more money coming in than what will be going out in an extra percentage point. And I think even if at the end of all this, the back and forth is done and the players get 0.55% more versus the whole one point, they can walk away feeling like they won. The owners can walk away feeling like they didn't cave and give in to everything. And we can have some baseball dog on it because I'm telling you, uh, as I laid this case out, Jeff, uh, we reached Valentine's Day. We got to the pitchers and catchers reporting date and Major League Baseball released a statement that told us what we already knew, which was spring training was not going to start on time. Yeah. They canceled games through magic number. Now they canceled games through March 5th and that March 5th start gives the hitters enough time to get ready for a season and it gives the pitchers enough time to get 75 percent ready for the start of a season. Now, I think that with baseball spring training starting the first week of March, they may have to do like they did in 2020, which is create a couple extra roster spots for teams to carry a couple extra pitchers to get through that first three to four week period in the season. But hope is not lost, Jeff. There is no. still hope for an on-time start March 31st, Great American Ballpark, Cincinnati, Ohio. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and, and then there's plenty of hope with this, Steve. And it's something that I, I think that we've needed. We've needed these whole, because Jeff Passan reported they're meeting again tomorrow at 1 p.m. And we had the pictures going on. And, like, you had the group of players that were with Tony Clark out in the parking lot kind of having a little bit of a strategy meeting is what the, the tagline on the picture said. It's hard to really tell exactly what they're talking about. But, you know, it. I think it looks like a group of guys that are getting ready to head into the game. Like, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit this up first. We're going to go here. And then we're all going to meet up at the seats. I think at the end of the day, they know what they're about to do. They were probably kind of saying like, look, the owners are not going to agree to all of our terms right now. They're going to give us a counter proposal. We need to be measured in our response. Let's go. And they were able to hold it together for five hours. This was not a situation like what we had at the beginning of the lockout when they're like, yeah, we met, we heard, we left. <laughs> and we met, we heard, we left. We met, we heard, we left. That's what we. That's all what we've heard up until this point, and they're going to continue. I believe that we will have a deal by the end of this week. I have hope, man. I got hope. Uh I do too. You know, the only thing missing from that picture of the players huddled in the parking lot was Sonny Gray drawing things in the dirt with a stick. That was really the <laughs> yeah. only thing missing from that shot that I needed to feel like, you know, that they were in serious negotiations. Out there, <laughs> yes. But, but, you know, I agree with you. Hope The hope is real here. I, I don't know necessarily if they'll have a deal by the end of the week. I think we may head into Monday of next week before someone's ready to announce that there's a deal in principle, but I don't think it'll be much longer than this Friday. I, I agree with you. They're going to be on the cusp of it by the end of the week. It may carry through the weekend for the Baseball Players Association. They're going to have to have a vote. They're going to have to put it out to the players and have a vote. So that could occur over the weekend, and then we get to Monday, things get ratified, and then we're talking about pitchers and catchers reporting, my friend. It sounds like the uh, plot of a very obvious movie that we're all figuring out as – we're watching it, but hopefully it falls exactly as we say. Coming up, let's players. Yes. Coming up, let's change our focus. Let's let, let's hone in on Great American Ballpark because there are so many storylines. And to be honest with you, we've got so caught up in the lockout. We've we've been doing a lot of prospect talk here recently, but I want to focus in on storylines for the major league players. And we're gonna start off with one of the favorite topics of all sports fans, and that is the face of the franchise. We are going to talk about why Jonathan India could be the face of the Reds by the end of the 2022 season. 
but you need to make the face of your snack game built bar built bar is the amazing snack that okay you're gonna say well candy bar built bar built bar is better than a candy bar trust me the stats are amazing 130 calories on average four grams of sugar four net carbs and up to 17 sometimes 18 grams of protein. Look, you're probably at the point in your new year's resolutions to get healthier and stay healthier where you're just like, I'm done. I don't want any more of this diet thing. It's terrible. Give me some chocolate. 100% real chocolate covers every single built bar. And we're talking about amazing flavors like cherry bar, see a coconut. There's white chocolate cookies and cream. Go there today at built.com and check all these flavors out. Plus, I got a promo code for you. You'll save some money. Lock 15. Save 15% off your next order at built.com. There's all kinds of great flavors like I mentioned. Plus, they've got the puffs. Now, you're going to think, is is it like these little bite-sized puffs? It's a chocolate bar of marshmallow that has protein in it. Marshmallow with protein? Yeah, it just works. Trust me. Magic? Maybe? I don't know. Go to built.com. Check them out today. Use the promo code LOCK15 and get yourself some Built Bar. Also, while you're on the internet, save yourself some time, save yourself some hassle, and check out rockauto.com. Why on earth would you ever want to go to a brick-and-mortar store down on the corner and talk to the dude behind the counter who's going to do what? Get on his computer and look for the parts. So cut out the middleman. Get on the your computer, your phone, your tablet, whatever. Go to rockauto.com and find exactly the right part for your car. Because guess what? They've got all the parts that your car will ever need. Whatever your car is. Do you have a 1992 Honda Accord? Do you have a 2022 Honda Accord? I know somebody who does. Do you have a 1960 Chevelle? I don't know. And maybe they made them in 60. Somebody's going to correct me on that, I'm sure. Go to rockauto.com. They've got that part for your car that you're looking for, whether it's a taillight, tailpipe, whether you got a brake or a brake pad, a brake rotor. I almost tripped myself up there. Whatever you need, rockauto.com. And when you go there, type Locked On in the How'd You Hear About Us section to let them know that your pal Jeff from the Locked On Reds podcast sent you and Steve whenever Steve does this ad read, but hey, I'm doing the ad read right now. Type in Locked On in the How'd You Hear About Us section section on (laughs) rockauto.com. God, I tried to do a joke there and I just messed that all up. Whatever, we'll keep rolling (laughs) on the next Locked On Reds. We haven't complained about the bullpen in a while, so we're going to. We're going to talk about the bullpen as we get ready for what is undoubtedly the end of the lockout coming here soon, and we start talking about actual baseball. Steve, actual baseball. But before we complain about the bullpen tomorrow, today, let's talk about the face of the franchise. There's a couple of things in sports that are transcendent, whether you're talking about the GOAT, whether you're talking about, you know, Jordan or uh, LeBron or whatever. I don't know. Face of the franchise is a huge one. Right now, it's Joey Votto. We thought for a minute Joey might have handed it off to A. Eugenio Suarez. A. Eugenio Suarez just struck out and handed it all back to Joey Votto last year. Plus, Joey Votto still bangs, but Jonathan India is the rookie of the year, and he's everywhere. He's at the Super Bowl. He's at Bengals games. He's at playoff games. He's being shown on the big board. Like whenever they were trying to pump up the crowd this year, you know, they had this thing at Bengals games at Paul Brown Stadium when they're just like, Chad Johnson sitting on a you know nice leather chair or something. He's just like, I know it's going to get you pumped up, and they show a picture of Skyline Chili. No, not so much. Then they show a picture of you know Corey Dillon going crazy and and, and running for a million yards. They're like, no, that's not good enough. And then they show Jonathan India in the club suites, and yes, that was the loudest roar of that sequence. So when we look at the face of the franchise, I believe he's got a shot to take this over and be the face of the team at the end of 2022. Am I wrong? Well, 
Yes, you are wrong. First of all, Joey, I know you're listening. I never thought you were not the face of this franchise. Uh, <laughs> not one second. Jeff may have. Steve-O did not. Uh, no, Joey Votto put up a season last year that was absolutely amazing. He solidified amongst the haters that he's a legitimate Hall of Famer. He solidified amongst a fan base that has been told year after year after year that he was not a great player, that he is, in fact, a great player. He did yeah. all of the things he needed to do to to submit himself in Cincinnati lore when it comes to baseball. So no, Jonathan Indy is not going to be the face of the franchise in 2022. That being said, Jonathan India is laying the groundwork to be the heir apparent. Uh, all of those things that you mentioned, all of the stuff that Jonathan India has done since winning the National League Rookie of the Year, all of the things that he has done just continued to endear him to the Cincinnati community and to Reds fans as a whole. So, you know, as long as as long as Votto still bangs, Votto is still the face of this franchise. And I learned a long time ago not to doubt Joey Votto. And I'm not going to do that until he gives me some indication or some reason otherwise that he's ready to be done. Because as long as Joey says he's still going to do it, Joey is still going to do it. So... My opinion is that Joey Votto will be the face of this franchise for the next two to three years, depending on the option, and then it will be the time of Jonathan India. Yeah, he got gifted a little bit of light to maybe extend that career. If he continues to mash 35 homers a year, there's no reason that the Reds should like let his option go and just buy him out. They should pick up that option. Well, especially after, with the DH, right? I mean, yeah. with the DH coming to the National League, I, I feel like that, was that the good news. automatically extends his career by at least yep. that one more year. Maybe even we talk extension because if he's out there, you know, putting up 30 bombs a year, you re-sign that guy. Yeah, especially if you can slot him in the DH spot. But I, I also think that Jonathan India has shown something that a lot of people would say, okay, well, what about the sophomore slump? What's going to happen in year number two? I think he went through plenty of adjustments in his rookie year. And sure, the you know opposing pitchers are going to get the film on him. They're going to try and figure out a weakness in his swing. I didn't see a weakness. There's not a Aristides Aquino thing where they're going to throw a breaking ball low and away and stump him. There's not a Jose Barrero thing where they're going to throw an inside fastball low and inside, and he's just going to continually swing and golf at it and completely miss at it. He is a smart hitter. He understands the strike zone. He understands the strengths of his own zone. Not necessarily, you know, does he have to swing if it's in the strike zone. If it's in his comfort zone, he's going to mash it. Jonathan India is one of the smartest hitters on this team, and I think a lot of that has to do with Mr. Joseph Daniel Vada, who is currently the face of the franchise. And I'll tell you this, in 2019 and 2020, we were really worried there for a minute on Joey, and I think that that is kind of where I started to think that a Eugenio Suarez was taking over, but he took it back, and he took it back emphatically, and he is the face of the franchise currently. But I think that Jonathan India has the talent – along with the ability to understand the strike zone. He's got the speed. He's got the fielding. And he's got the hair. That hair, man. It's better than Joey's. I mean, I can't I can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no, listen, you Jeff, you hit it you hit a key point. What we saw from Jonathan India last season is that there will be times that he struggles and there will be times that the opposing pitchers figure it out a little bit but They will him. be short. But, but what he has demonstrated is he has the ability to adapt. He has the ability to overcome that adversity and he has the ability to to get in the to the film room, put in the work and figure out what's happening and make the adjustments that are necessary to be productive. I think that he has solidified himself as a, a top of the lineup threat for this team for years to come. And I'm, I'm really excited to watch his game continue to evolve in this sophomore season because I think we've not seen the best of Jonathan India yet. You know what? And, and, and you're going to like this, and so will Doug. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Star Wars guy, but I'm also a Star Trek guy. And uh, he kind of reminds me of the Borg a little bit. You know, resistance is futile. Pitching is futile. Eventually, he's going to adapt, and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. Oh, Jonathan India, the like, Borg. Huh? There you go. Well, you know what, Jeff? I think the big the big takeaway from all this is Jonathan India is the guy in waiting. He is the heir apparent. He will take the mantle from Joey Votto when Joey Votto decides the time is right. And, you know, I am so excited to have Jonathan India 
as a member of the Cincinnati Reds. I'm so excited to watch his career develop, and I'm so excited to see what he does next. But coming up, Jeff, I think that we're going to talk about some guys that are trying to be the next Jonathan India. We're going to check in on some of the non-40-man roster dudes that are out in Goodyear right now trying to make their case to be the next Jonathan India and be the next Rookie of the Year in the Reds' farm system. But before we talk about them, I want to talk to you about BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, more odds, and more lines than ever before. And now that football has come to the end, they have lots of other sports for you to dig into and and get your uh, gaming action on. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores and news and information. It's not only football, as I mentioned. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute information on pro and college hoops, the NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates on the games as they happen. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new and amazing offers coming to you in 2022. Head over to betonline.net to get updated on all of the information and all of the action. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. Thanks so much for making Locked on Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. Make sure you are following the podcast on all of the social media platforms. We are on Twitter at Locked on Reds. You can follow Jeff at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with one, two, three Fs. And you can follow me at S. Offenbaker. Uh, Jeff, even though spring training is delayed, not canceled, even though the major league players are locked out for now, uh, there's lots of players showing up out in Goodyear. We've seen pictures of Nick Lodolo throwing the ball. We have seen Ellie De La Cruz absolutely mashing the baseball out in oh, Goodyear. Yeah. 117 miles an hour off the bat, Jeffrey. 117, not once, not twice, but consistently. Uh, it's a time to be excited about some of these youngsters that are out in Goodyear honing their craft while they're waiting on the uh, collective bargaining agreement to kind of sort itself out. You know, it's funny. I think that Keith Law kind of had something baked into his L.A. De La Cruz report because he said L.A. De La Cruz has a super high ceiling and could be a perennial all-star. But then what else he say? He could not even make the major leagues. Which, sure, obviously, anybody in the minor leagues who hasn't already made the major leagues has the ability to not make the major leagues. I think L.A. De La Cruz ain't going to be anywhere near that. He might be a fast-track dude. He might, In fact, that's something that Kylie McDaniel said on ESPN, that he could be a fast-track prospect. He could be a guy that, if he continues to see better pitching this season and continues to rake against them, you're going to have a hard time keeping him in the minor leagues for a very long time. Now, sure, it's not going to be this year. He's not going to be in the major leagues this year, but what we have seen from him over there, that's probably over there in good year i said over there like i was pointing to the other side of my room whatever um in good year has been absolutely phenomenal the other thing that has been super exciting to me super positive has been nick lodolo another guy that keith law kind of you know i mean he didn't really crap on ellie daily cruz but he really crapped on nick lodolo saying that you know he's not healthy he might not even make the major leagues because he can't stay healthy and maybe he's a bullpen guy who knows Guess who looks healthy? Nicola Dolo. Oh, Nicola Dolo looks amazing. People, I've seen people embracing that take, Jeff, that, uh, that these national guys are putting out there. And this is how these narratives get controlled, is these national guys put stuff out there and it sticks. And they're not necessarily, you know, I will bet you that, that Keith Law has not watched Nicola Dolo pitch. And he's definitely not mm -hmm. out in Arizona watching him throw right now. And all indications are that the shoulder is strong. It looks yep. good. The, the coaching staff said, has said outright they have identified an issue that was leading to the blisters. It was part compensation for the shoulder, and it was part the ridiculous baseball that Major League Baseball provided the minor leagues the second half of the season last year. It was a different baseball with a different... Is it that blitz ball, that one that like yes. curves more? It's exactly. <laughs> it was, you know, the, the one that they said they didn't change. But they did. So, you know, of course it led to, to issues with some of the pitchers. Listen, I am excited, Jeff. Lodolo has an outside shot to make this team on opening day just because mm -hmm. of the fact that the other pitchers that are on the 40-man roster right now 
can't pitch. They can't get with the coaching staff. They can't get better. So he's going to have a head start. And when it comes down to it, we could see him come up, make a few starts while everybody else gets ready, and then head back down to AAA to kind of finish rounding out his buildup on his shoulder. Now, I'm not advocating putting tons of inning on his arm right out of the gate, but I think that that's a viable option for this team to have uh, an advantage and start strong where other teams might not because they've got all this great young talent right now. You know, something I would love to see them do is take Nick Lodolo and Hunter Green and almost, uh, you don't even have to do like a six-man rotation. It'd be cool if you did, but you could take them and rotate them. You could have one be a starter, make a start, and then his next start in the rotation, you give it to the other guy. So if Hunter Green makes the first start, then five starts later, you give it to Nick Lodolo. And during that period of rest, for Hunter Green, maybe he makes a long relief appearance or two, bring him in for two innings at a time or something like that. Maybe that's something that they can employ with him, and especially with Nick Lodolo. I would love to see him work his way into the starting, into the pitching staff out of the gate because <laughs> I'm going to say a name because it, it, it's easy to say Nick Lodolo, Major Leagues right now. I don't know. I think he should probably start in the AAA and work some things out and then be brought up. Let, let's put it this way. Nick Lodolo or Jeff Hoffman? Mm. Oh, I mean, come on. Uh, as, as, as somebody I mean, come on. You, as someone that sat with you at Great American Ballpark and watched a Jeff Hoffman start, if you recall how many runs mm. the other team scored that day, Jeff... Let's not I do, do that. I do. Let's not do that again. But I have, <laughs> I have a little takeaway on uh, on what you just suggested. Maybe a little bit better way to do it because I don't like the idea of okay. bouncing these two arms between the bullpen and the rotation. But mm -hmm. unless it changes in this new collective bargaining agreement, you need ten days between the time you send a, pit, a player down and the time you bring them back up. That's mm -hmm. two starts. Mm -hmm. So if Hunter Green made two starts and then swapped with Lodolo who made two starts and then swapped with Hunter Green, you could do that all season long, only burn up one option for each of them and protect those arms. They would both be rested and healthy for a postseason run. And then we could rename that stretch of 71 and 75 in between Louisville and Cincinnati. Instead of calling it the CNL Perez Expressway, it could be the, hey, we actually did something useful with this expressway. Could just be the Green Lodolo Expressway speed limit <laughs> 101. Yeah, 101. And right down the pipe because there's going to be all kinds of good command there with all those good pitches. And I love to. And, and here's something else, something that um, I, I, don't, I haven't seen anybody talk about this. So if I'm stealing this from somebody, I'm sorry. But there's a picture that's going around of a bunch of different players out in Goodyear and they're wearing different numbers. You had Matt McLean wearing number two and you had Reese Hines wearing number four. Did he get Brandon Phillips sign off on that? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's everybody take a, a breath. The only reason everybody's in their real numbers right now is because the big leaguers aren't in camp or else all of these guys will be wearing like 80 through 100. So let's pause and no, Brandon Phillips believes his number should be retired. So <laughs> even, in good year. <laughs> even in good year, even in good Yes, even in Goodyear. But no, it's it's very encouraging to hear the things that we are coming out of Goodyear. And sure, they could be all, you know, roses and kittens for a reason. But I, I, I like roses and kittens. I've heard nothing but, you know, crap about baseball for the last two and a half months. So I'd, I'd rather hear about roses and kittens, uh, you know, obviously when you compare the two. But looking at the talent that they've got out in Goodyear, it, it, there's no reason to think that one of those guys is not going to impress. And, and the well, fact you, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was, well, I was say, you know, yeah. I was going to say, you know, I, so there's some other video floating around today. And uh, one of those guys is not in Goodyear because he's on the 40-man roster, but he posted some video today anyway, and that's Aleo Lopez. And I don't know if you happened to catch this video, but he was absolutely raking. He was launching bombs during a batting practice that he was taking. And, you know, there's one of the guys that we've talked about that if they could step up a little bit could become an impact player in 2022. And I want to tell you what, he looked good in the batter's box. And just having having actual baseball footage of baseball players doing baseball things today was absolutely amazing in the timeline, I want to tell you. I needed it because 
if you go on any streaming service right now and search baseball for like a baseball movie or something like that, they don't because they don't care because they don't want to worry about baseball right now because baseball is telling them not to worry about baseball right now. So, yes, it was very good to see. And I got a take coming for you, and I'll just give you a little bit of taste because here in a couple of episodes we're going to talk about this. Alejo Lopez deserves more attention from all of us, including the Reds front office and David Bell. That's something that we're going to talk about at a later date though this has been an amazing podcast getting the chance to talk a little bit about reds baseball when we're looking at some guys out in goodyear when we're talking about the face of the franchise this has energized me steve this has energized me and we've got a lot more coming up for you later this week kind of like we said we're going to complain about the bullpen on tomorrow's episode of the locked on reds podcast although there's some good parts about this bullpen lucas sims is one of the best and then we'll talk about some other stuff that kind of concerns us but that's all coming up on the next Locked On Reds podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Now go make Locked On Bets your second listen as your boy Q and Lee Sterling will help you make a couple of bucks and bet online on Locked On Bets, which is just like Locked On Reds, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and make sure you're jumping on YouTube with us as well. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up on YouTube as the season nears. That's not going to be in your podcast feed, but you can find it on the lockdown reds YouTube page, Steve, it might be the off season and we're still locked out despite everybody talking more and more and more, but what are you and I and everybody listening right now? We are locked on reds every single day. See you next time.